Thank you, Chanel. It's a weekly recap show. We give a down to the things that we like and the hell to the things that we don't. Big Sean shot his shot like Pim Pim, and nobody heard the shots go off. First of all, why are you? What is this Big Sean disrespect? What does he have to do with this beef where he has to catch so much flat for right now? It's not time for you right now. So he's not allowed, no one else is allowed to rap if they're not involved in the beef. We only sound want silly. one of three you people sound, to rap. You sound right like now. one of them Drake fans. We want one of three people to rap. Okay, so again, I'm going to ask you. You're not allowed to rap if you're not wrapped up into the Oh, worship. you know what? I take that back. One of four people. Got to include Future in there. Yes or no. If you're not involved in this back, back and forth right now, then you're not allowed to rap at all. You can't drop. No, you can drop. Just be prepared to be overshadowed when one of those other four people drop. It doesn't have to be that way. It is currently that way, unfortunately. It doesn't have to be that way. Sure, but it that's the landscape now. Like we we could just choose to watch everything. Like the whole point of all of this. Did is you that listen to Bryson Tiller? Bryson Tiller is an R and B artist. Did you listen to it? He's an R and B artist. Did you listen He's to it? He's not a album? rapper. He's not a rapper. Did anything else play out of your speakers does, this weekend count. besides Cole? Yeah. And Pew Pew A. Yeah, I went back and I played Metro and Future. Precision, obviously. Uh, listen to Blue Lips. Like, I'm not going to turn off all like other that. hip-hop. That's not true. Oh, okay. All right. It's not true. I, again, just because I thought 21's album was better doesn't mean that I didn't like Blue Lips. No, I'm talking about the Cole album. Oh, the one he just dropped? Yeah. No, it was dope. I thought it was, but it was pretty much standard Cole. And he wasn't mean enough. On the disc. He wasn't mean enough at all. Like I, I don't I don't think he knows. I don't think either one of them know who they fucking with. Like sure. that's Candyman for a reason. And he's not playing with you. So why why we're like, oh, this is a warning shot. Nigga, fuck the warning shot. The warning shot already happened, right? It's war. I don't know if you're watching Shogun right now, Jermaine, but you need to peep. You are you 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 playing the role of Torinaga right now, and 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 your boy K Dot is Ishido. Okay, Ishido got all the power, and he's dictating to you what's about to happen. He said, you can either die here in front of me, or you can die out there in the field. See, the Toronaga and Shogun, though, is getting right. You know, he about to, about to get that Crimson Sky going. But see, you, you niggas are just lollygagging out there in that fishing country, having a good old time. And you didn't got a letter, you know, from the damn capital telling you, hey, it's time to rap. And one of your mans is still drunk at the brothel. One of your mans is drunk at the brothel. It's hilarious. I hope all of the people who are watching Shogun got those references. So if I'm being honest, I believe Cole is actually the better rapper. The issue is Kendrick has Mamba mentality. Kendrick is coming to take not, niggas' heads off. Playing for he didn't, he didn't come out and talk about you for a warning shot. Yeah. All right. Oh, you dropped four albums in 12 years. Okay. So let's go back 12 years and let's let's say, okay, so 2012. 2012. How many albums? Doesn't include section no, 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 no. We, let's get off out. Of, let's get off of Cole. I mean, Kendrick for a minute. Uh-huh. How many albums has Cole put out since 2012? The same amount from what I heard. 2012. So we're talking about Four Your Eyes Only. We're talking about Forest Still Drive. Because that was 2014. Did Born Center come out at that time? No, that was before. Okay. That was like 2010, 2008, something like that. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so we got four no, your eyes only. Born Center came out. Wait, we said 12 years? 12 years. So 2012 and after. Born Center came out 2013. Okay. Born Center, four your eyes only, KOD. The off season. Off season. Four Sills Drive. Didn't I say four Sills Drive? So you, that was Born what I started Center, with. Four Sills Drive. Yeah. For your eyes only, KOD off season. Five. You put out one more album than Katie. Actually, six now. And 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 honestly, we can take that four year old Zionly and just like forget that we ever did it. Let's let's just keep it funky because there's not a miss on Kendrick's discography. For your eyes only got a lot of hate that it didn't deserve, but it is the worst okay. of all of that. Fam, there is no. It got a lot of hate that it didn't deserve on Kendrick's discography. That's why he take the amount of time in between the albums that he does. Uh, Mr. Morale, and now T Pab. Stop it. T Pab is getting a lot stop of hate. It. Stop it. Stop it. Because T-Pab, of what Cole said. T Pab's getting a lot of hate today. Because of what from Cole, Cole fans, yes. right? Today, uh-huh. if this was seven days ago, 
There's nobody who's willing to die on that hill that T Fab sure. is, is terrible. Sure. No, I agree. Every one of you who, who, who hopped on that bad wagon after Cole said it is a fraud. Yeah. You I a agree. fake. I you agree. a fake. You either didn't have the balls to say it when it was unpopular, or you didn't really feel that way, and you and a popular person said it, so now you can go along with it. That, that, I'm not I'm not about to hear that. If you wasn't telling me that to, to that King Kunta and all right was trash. Back then, I don't want to hear it now. Also, I'm 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 really struggling to get my mind around the 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 people's champ or what was supposed to be the people's champ in Kit and Cole, right? Making fun of the album that had the most social impact. See that that that, feel, that feels like something that Drake would say, sure. because Drake has never given a damn about a black issue since he started rapping or an album. You know what I'm saying? But. To hear that come from Cole was a little bit telly. So we got the we got the album criticism thing. We got the um and then saying, you know, your first yeah, yeah, yeah. talking thing, about the thing butterfly, trash. right? Yeah. Also, this this thing about you criticizing niggas from for for Holland and saying shit for shock value or only you know beefing for clout. Bam, I'm gonna say this to you again. I said it, I said it uh, about Cole. When he made the the false prophets joint, right? Talking about Kanye, mm-hmm. this man is a rank hypocrite because the niggas that he buddy buddy with, the niggas that he bumps shoulders with, the niggas that won't say his name in a verse or challenge him in any real way. This is the LeBron effect, by the way. The niggas that won't challenge him, they're good. They're above reproach. We don't really have any criticism for those guys. I have no criticism for them whatsoever in bars or or otherwise. Right? In all things that you would really think that Cole would criticize somebody for. Mm-hmm. Like, fam, are you you really you down with the nigga who was in blackface? Like that's that's your man's? That's your boy? Him? He got caught up on sex charges? Your man's that you was with him? <laughs> that you be with? I heard you grew up with him. I heard you grew up with him. <laughs> That's crazy. You ain't never feel nothing in your gut, like no guilt or nothing. Uh, but then when it's time for Kendrick, Kendrick only does stuff for cloud. He only does things for publicity, blah, 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 blah. Right? Fam, this is false prophets from five years ago. Yeah. Oh, you a false prophet. You don't write your raps. You fake. You phony. You do this. You do that. Everything you said about Kanye could have been applied to Drake at that time. Sure. Similarly, here we are talking about Kendrick, only doing shit for clout, only doing shit for expediency. What is all of these these male on female beefs that Drake has had in the last two or three years? What is that? Is that not for clout or publicity? No, no. All way. the shots at Meg or Jennifer Lopez or Serena Williams, these random beefs with women. So when, when did we start giving rappers allowances to start beefing with women? The only people that get a green card from us to beef with women is 50 Cent because it's hilarious. Or Saucy Santana. Uh, he stands alone on that one. Saucy Santana can't be with the women. I would He's say not no. Basically, in that same field, I, I would say no. But <laughs> that's my opinion. I think he already has. No, he definitely does. I'm just saying. Moving on. That, that, that was my thoughts on the on the beef so far. I feel like only one person has actually swung, and the other person that's talked about swinging, and the other one just sitting up there with his thumb up his butt on tour. So well. Speaking of Drake, I felt like the first half of Seven Minute Drill and a lot of the songs on the album gave off a feel. And I I, I heard Joe Button say the same thing. It gave off a feel like J. Cole was enjoying his time on tour with Drake and getting some of the same vibes from Drake. And and some of those songs sounded like they were a little more popish than J. Cole is used to. This is the problem with some of the niggas in the NBA, too, man. Y'all been so buddy-buddy with LeBron all these years. Y'all won't put that old man out of his misery. I'm trying I'm trying to figure out how the 10th seed, the ninth seed, which, you know, we climbing, right? We win the games. We on, like, what, a seven-game win streak or something like that? Um, So they're doing their thing. But I'm saying, like, they've been buddy-buddy with this man so long that they won't kill him. The way that people was trying to kill Kobe at the end of his career, the way that they try to kill Jordan at the Wizards, the way that they try to get you when you get old. Like people was trying to put put moves and trying to dunk on Tim Duncan at the end when he was at the Spurs. Like it was getting it was getting there. 
Same thing with Dirk when he was getting past his, you know, his able to move side to side days. They was pulling Dirk. Dirk was the backup center in Dallas the last couple of seasons. Since I'm talking about Joe Budden takes, they also called Cole essentially Tim Duncan because he don't have that same, like, killer instinct. That killer instinct. But he's still, like... Fundamental. Yeah. That's what I felt about the album. I felt like this is, like, these are God-level bars. Like, he's hitting on a lot of these, but it's like, you're not trying to take him out. You know who he is? He's Mark Grayson. The only problem is, you're beefing with Omni-Man. Well... He's is Mark Cole getting his ass whooped. Okay, you you know how I was talking about Mark taking those ass whoopings, but getting incrementally <laughs> yeah. better. Okay, yeah. that's 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 okay. where we at. Fair. That's where we at. Like maybe he didn't get his teeth knocked in like like that. Well, but see, but this is the thing. Kendrick swung first. This is a response. That that's that's why the the level of scrutiny is so high. You had all this time. You made this entire album, fam. Might delete later. You put out an entire project. So you took a lot of time and thought to put in this to say it was just a warning. The the fall off is still coming. Yeah. Okay. Like this shouldn't be no warning shot. You put this much effort into it. Put out a track and say that. Not not an entire 12. Well, I think he had the album already ready. And then obviously he added seven minute drill on after the fact. I would like to think that because of the way it played, but all of the bars were so so specific to well, what he just happened. I was gonna say he might have added on not all just, those tracks, not though. Just seven minute drill, but he might have added several tracks to the album. Added stuff, or like added, a... or maybe even added lines or something. That seems like a lot for a project that's already ready to go. I'm just. Saying. I think some of those tracks were already ready to go. No, 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 and for sure. Some, some of those was in the top. I'm added. saying the comp the compilation coming together as a project feels like a lot to say that it was already designated to come out right, and we just went back and tweaked stuff to make it relevant to was because that that seems like a lot of time and effort that you'd already put into making a project. Now you're completely changing it, having to change words in the song, right? The seven minute drill changed over at the end, right? Like I thought we was, I thought we was gonna get something stupid out of that track. Well, even in I how, thought we was gonna get something dumb, and it was just it was standard Cole. Which even in good. how producer T minus explained how seven minute drill came about, he basically told T minus like, "You got to make a beat within seven minutes, and he's gonna make the verse within seven minutes." And then the reason why light work. Uh, like PWC was like the first line is because T minus gave him the first word to start the, the verse off with. So mm. like he did kind of phone this in. If he took seven minutes to kind of write this verse out. Damn. I'm, I'm just saying it, it wasn't lackluster. It was quality bars. We just didn't get that. Oh shit. No, no man, like, sure. like we got from like that. I uh, also think it's funny. It, this goes to the whole Drake being an influence on him kind of thing. That uh, might delete later is something that girls post on captions to say, "Oh, I felt cute, but Fam. I might delete Fam. later." Fam. All you tweeting the leaders. <laughs> All you tweeting the leaders. Like, man, why? Why is that the type of shit that you want to be tied into? Like, why do you want to be associated with that? Why do you want to be associated with random beasts with women and and fucking? Maybe there's Black, a different blackface porn star baby mamas. Why yeah. why do you want to be associated with that so bad? Oh, we're gonna talk about baby mamas later. Lord um America. but yeah, no, felt cute might delete later is some there might be some kind of alternate meaning that I didn't catch, but that's insane. Uh why is Gucci <laughs> doing the track for <laughs> poetry? Found an extra lyrical miracle in the intro. Yeah, I'm about to say this motherfucker is talking. Like he's not even rapping. <laughs> right now. You find young Dro after a full dead beat. <laughs> and then the daylight absol that the daylight absol shit was tough. So, it was cold. That was crazy. No, like as a album, if he would have never beefed with Kendrick, if th that was never happening, I'd have been like, oh shit, the fall off about to be crazy. If this yeah. is what he's giving us now is like a throwaway. The fall off is going to be crazy. Yeah. The problem I have now is that the the level of expectation for the fall off just went through the roof. It just went for the roof because you didn't satisfy me on the Kendrick bars, and now I now I know that since this was the warning, the real real shit should be coming in the fall off, right? 
which was already a highly anticipated album. It was supposed to be your retirement album. Yeah. So now we got retirement album, response to Kendrick, all in the same. And if you fall short on either one, people are going to say that you flopped, regardless of how quality the project was in the first place. And this is the album that you've been putting last six, seven years into. It's his views. Remember when Drake kept saying, Views, views is coming. coming. Views coming. <laughs> the views are coming. The views are coming. And boys oh. treated that album like a pariah. Like a pariah. I was the only one who enjoyed it. It was me and, and Rory. Rory is insane. It was me and Rory. We was on that island alone. It was okay. I cannot tell who is my friend. Mm hmm. No, that is not views. Yeah, that was. That's more life. You like more? You yeah. like more life? You I like, like that song. Life? Okay. I don't like more life. You like a uh, passion fruit? That's, that's I need distance between you and them. The South Carolina women's basketball team. Shout out to South Carolina, so I don't have to hear about Caitlin Clark winning the championship. On a national championship this Sunday afternoon. Shout out to them, man, for bringing home thirty-eight and zero. Thank goodness, thirty-eight and zero. My only question is, somebody got to remind me who was ahead and by how much when that brawl with LSU happened in the SEC uh, tournament. Because that seems to be the only potential blemish on their season. That could have been, you know, the only L. But 38-0 and is nuts. Yeah. Again, the only, only team that, that I can even think about was even close to that would have been one of Gino Oriema's UConn teams. Shout out to Coach Staley. Shout out to Coach Staley. Or, or maybe one of Pat Summit's Tennessee teams. Mm -hmm. But recent memory? Oh, no. It's it's South Carolina. South Carolina has been dominating the game as a team. Right? It's been a lot of individuals, a lot of Caitlin Clarks, a lot of, lot of rocking Louis and Cuban links, you feel me? A lot of Louis fits. But when we get out there on the field, y'all ain't really tough. A lot of Marvin Harrison Jr.'s out there. Okay. But 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 team success that 38 and 0, i.e. 15 and 0 on your way to a national championship. Wrong, Don Staley. Wrong sport. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I was just conflating champions. That's all. My bad. Wrong. My bad. Sport. I was just conflating champs. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong sport. Shout out to the to the game, Cox. Congratulations. Well deserved. Sheesh. So this actually came from a video that I'm going to play from y'all. Apparently, there are a bunch of white folks in St. Lucia trying to privatize public beaches and then selling the vacation experiences online, like marketing the vacation experiences. Oh, brother. Yep, let's take a listen. So the Start people in St. Lucia are protesting <laughs> because white people are moving there, buying a property, privatizing the public beaches, and then posting stuff like this. Watch. I don't know if that's loud enough for y'all here. We will post a video on here if you couldn't. The beach here at Calabas Cove is excellent. They have a grassy area or a sandy area. Because not everybody loves getting sand on their feet. The beaches in St. Lucia's are not private. They may seem private, but they're all public. So what the people of St. Lucia's have been protesting is white people literally putting up signs, keeping them off their own beaches. And their protest is working because this was on Fair Helen Beach. And in the video, you can see white people just be like, uh, no, I'm out of here. If there's going to be a lot of the locals here. You know, the, pe the people who are actually from St. Lucia. So, yeah, so if white people are colonizing the beaches. They're trying to. It's not even they aren't even taking the time, effort, and spending the money to actually colonize it. They're, They're just, just planting a sign saying this is ours and telling everybody else that it's their shit. Oh, it's not even real colonizing. Oh, they doing brother. discount colonization. Lazy colonizing. Lazy colonizing is disrespectful <laughs> twice over. Not only are you trying to take my land, but you're not even actually trying to take my land. You're just <laughs> trying to tell everybody that you took my land. That's crazy. That's crazy. No, nope. should I be more disrespected by the fact that you didn't actually take my shit, but you telling everybody you took my shit? No, I should be more disrespected by the fact that you're not willing to really put really put for the effort to actually call. If you're gonna try to colonize me, actually colonize me, does <laughs> that's a crazy quote? Actually, colonize actually me, colonize me, cuz 
So yeah, shout out to St. Lucia for the protest and uh, you know making it known that that's what they out there doing nasty work. Oh, I got another tweet for y'all to play, and this has been the most hilarious shit that I've heard all weekend. So I hope y'all laugh, and I hope you can hear it. So apparently, Doja Cat has been having a rough go of it with her fan base. Yes, she's been having a rough go, guys. Uh, for some reason or another, the white supremacist that she picked up. On her Reddit pages and in her, you know, her her feet rooms, you know, where she was doing race play, are not very nice about her natural black hair. You know, anytime she shows what's underneath all of the wigs and sew-ins that she wears, people call it pubic hair, and they, you know, refer to it in very demeaning ways. And it's almost as if the racist that she picked up in the race play rooms that she was holding are still racist when they see her black ass actually looking black. It's crazy. But somebody was actually able to encapsulate this moment even better than I was, right? And put it into song form and to share with all of us. So we're, we're just going to play it. This is this is Francesca Ramsey, by the way. Um, she got some other affiliations that I don't really agree with, but this shit is funny. So we're going to go ahead and play. <laughs> Hold on, here we go. My hair, to describe it, it's 4C hair texture. 4C a hair lot texture. of y'all don't give a <laughs> However, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a consistent pattern in my comment section of people Hold on, baby. saying, is my hair <laughs> hair? Is it, is it pubic hair? Is it, is it carpet? Is it sheep's wool? People comparing my hair to sheep and <laughs> and carpet and popcorn and <laughs> like that. Like, we gotta move forward. She wants to move Let's, forward. She Let's wants her fans forward. to stop calling her shit this sheep. One, two, three times too much. The leopards do do that. They do eat your face when you let them in. Yep. <laughs> sure was. Toes and everything. It's crazy that they did that, right? Wild. That is wild. Always. That is how you wanted it, though. Should have listened to it. Because we told you. You acting like Candace Owens now. <laughs> Sing that shit, Rebecca. The ad libs are insane. Sing that shit, Rebecca. Never thought they would. That is craziness. But this shit hard. Um, you know, I would really fuck with her more if she wasn't on a podcast with consciously. Because she's immensely talented. She just mm. has a bad choice in, in friends. Damn. But, uh, yeah, no. This shit is great. Very talented. Awesome song. Reminds me of these B, uh, BBLs killing y'all. Yeah, right? These BBLs killing y'all. <laughs> and the thighs don't match. <laughs> All right. Where are we going? That was Doja Cat. Oh, Apple. Apple is getting the next L from me. So apparently on an episode last week from uh, on The Daily Show from Jon Stewart, baby's clearly upset today. Jon Stewart had a Daily Show episode where he was talking about how Apple tried to stop him from doing a interview with a, uh, a, what was she, a security, Homeland Security person? That sounds right. Uh, John Stewart says Apple wouldn't let us do a segment on the dangers of AI and asked us not to have Federal Trade Commission chair. That's what it was. Gotcha. The FTC lady. Lena Khan on as a guest. <laughs> they literally asked us, please don't talk to her. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Why? Did it and that, that's the point that he didn't get to in this variety article. Didn't really tell why they didn't want him to speak to them, but I mean, 
I, I'm struggling to come up with reasons why I would even entertain a conversation with Apple. Like, what is the relationship between Apple and The Daily Show that you first, you, you number one, feel like you can ask me not to interview somebody? Mm-hmm. Number one, that's very odd. Number two, not leading with the context of why I shouldn't interview this person is, is also very telling. It's very telling. The fact that you felt like you had enough reach to even ask me and then to not lead with the context like, hey, they're a racist. Hey, they do pseudoscience. Hey, they've been widely discredited. Not just walking in and saying, hey, please don't interview them. <laughs> what? what? What the fuck is this? Is this a backroom deal? Are you scratching my back right now? You want me to scratch yours? What do you mean? What do you mean? Please don't interview her. <laughs> and, I, and I thought it was it was it was really alarming about the, the subject matter, talking about dangerous AI. That's what I want to hear y'all talk about. I don't want to hear you talk about how I'm not going to have a job in the next 10 years. I don't want to hear you talk about how, you know, how effectively billionaires can rake in their cash now by keeping, you know, labor costs low. It's, it's not it's not what I want to hear about. Tell me how this shit is going to turn into Skynet in the next five years. That's what I want to know. That's why I want to know how to avoid. Because every story that you've tried to tell me about AI since I was like five years old is robots learning, becoming autonomous, and taking over. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, that doesn't seem to be a worry for anybody. Nobody seems to worry about self-teaching, self-learning robots becoming autonomous. Especially the way we're fast-tracking the technology. Because humans are perfect. We don't do oversights when it comes to advancements in technology. And we're perfect. And we could never lose to robots. Seems to be the attitude from everybody, from all walks of life, from both sides of the aisle. When did that become a thing? When did the autonomous robots become harmless? When AI started actually helping people do their jobs and do certain things. That's the thing, man. Helping people to become a little more lazy. Where convenience is, we will accept anything. If it's convenient, we will take just about anything. Literally. Yep. Uh, I'm okay. Last L, I got probably spend the most amount of time here. LeBron James Jr. and his father. Nope. But yes, yeah, crazy. In this saga. Crazy. Th- this is, this is, y'all. Like, at first, okay, so first I was predicting. Then I felt like, ah, well, maybe I'm just talking it up because it's not really playing out that way. And, you know, maybe it will go well. Sure. And then the, the actual college basketball season started. And then we actually got to see what Bronny looks like in live gameplay. And where he's at as a basketball player post, you know, the congestive heart thing that he had going on. Mm -hmm. And then there was this latest news. Yeah. Well, there was two parts to this. Yeah. Bronny is entering the transfer portal. He's going to get his NBA evaluation. So he has technically entered the draft. Mm -hmm. But leaving USC at all tells me what, what the focus is. Right. It, it's still the NBA. Yeah. It's not his development. Right. Because how with, with everything that's going on, not just the basketball and where he's at in his in his quest to become a, a NBA player. Like because that, that, that's only part of it. I'm saying where he is at coming off of the health scare that he had. Mm-hmm. Right. He's at home. He's playing basketball at the University of Southern Cal. He's at home. Right. He, he's close. He's where all of his doctors, his family, everything that is integral to his life. Yeah. It's right here. Yep. And yet he's going to enter in a transfer portal. It almost seemed to me that he is going to see what comes of the NBA. But then if he don't get on no real offers, it's, it's transfer. We time. already know what his NBA prospects are. Okay. Blank slate, default player, right? He's at a Power 5, Big 10 school. He averages five points a game, five rebounds a game. Doesn't start and had a rare heart complication that has seemed to have subsided because he played an entire season, but Mm -hmm. still question mark at the beginning of the season before he was able, able, excuse me, 
actually able to play. Mm-hmm. What does that draft prospect look like? Not We're not going to put a name on the player, but remember, we only got two rounds to get drafted in the NBA. Correct. In a pool of 500 players. Yep. That's what is that? Good. What does that draft prospect look like? Not very good at all. Now all of a sudden we slap Bronny's name on it, and Kendrick was- Perkins is on ESPN talking about how he's hooped with NBA players all his life, so he's ready to go. It almost looks like Leangelo Ball. Twisting himself into fu- – Leangelo Ball was a better NBA player than LeBron – than Blonde James Jr. is today. And you know what? I said what I said. Leangelo Ball was a better NBA player than LeBron James Jr. is today. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I said what I said. Well, yeah, because LeBron James Jr. isn't in the NBA. If he was, Leangelo Ball would be, better. would be a better NBA player than LeBron James Jr. is today. I said what I said. There, there, there's, there's, I don't even know how it is that we're saying this out loud. Like, Kendrick Perkins talked over there talking about, yeah. Some players aren't suited for college, and they're just better, and they're they're ready for the NBA. I, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are players that can't play college basketball that are suited to play in the NBA. Okay, Kendrick, how, how exactly how much of your career are you willing to stake on this? I, I'll put the bet up with you. I'll put the bet up with you. How much money are you willing to bet? That LeBron James Jr. doesn't make it a single day past his father's retirement in the NBA. How much do you want to bet the minute that LeBron James Sr. hangs up his basketball shoes, so did his son? Because now we've gone into full-on narrative. We're not even saying, okay, he's going to play two years. LeBron's going to hang on for two more years. Then he'll be able to be drafted as a role player. They can play together. Bada boom, bada bing. Wipe your hands. Done with the done with the the NBA career. That's not what we're saying no more. We're saying someone should pick LeBron James Jr. in the lottery so that they can hang on to LeBron, and he's totally ready to play in the NBA, even though he could not even start at USC. Couldn't start at USC. Average five points a game off the bench. I, I would have given it to you if he was like a Kentucky freshman. Yeah. And like it just wasn't in the starting five, but he's still five stars, still a lottery pick. Put up a bunch of points off. Devin Booker. Devin Booker set the bench at Kentucky. Devin Booker was a walking bucket. Devin Booker averaged 18 points a game off the bench. Devin Booker showed you that he can get a bucket anywhere. In college and NBA. Bronny hasn't proven that. Bronny has not even developed himself into an NBA player. And that's just a fact. I don't know what he's going to be. I don't know how good he's going to be at his peak. What I do know is that if we keep accelerating his process before he gets a chance to do what he needs to do as a basketball player, which is learn and get better, then his last day in the NBA will be his father's last day, regardless of who drafts him. I gotta give a dub to potential defensive back, uh, defensive back recruit for Ohio State, Trey McNutt from Shaker Heights. Oh yeah, yeah, about the Ohio high school thing. Yeah, yeah, he's been supposedly doing seven on sevens across the country uh, because he's such a highly touted recruit. Uh, he he, up, he also says uh, that a lot of his growth has been thanks to some of those seven on sevens. Well, it, it, there's a lot that comes with that, right? First of all, the the seven on seven circuit is to high school football what the AAU circuit is to high school basketball. Agreed. Um, the 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 pipeline from those programs, from those teams to college programs, is as defined as it is from AAU teams to college basketball programs. I would agree. Um, also the relationship with that apparatus, those leagues in that of the recruiting services is almost one-to-one. If Mm -hmm. you do not play 
seven on seven you football. Don't get the exposure to you those. don't get the exposure. You don't get the rankings, and it does affect you. It's another reason why I think that the recruiting rankings as a industry are boof in general. Because if you can't ask a kid to, to shell out the thousands of dollars to go play flag football year round, then I can't get an adequate ranking for my skill. And that speaks to the bias of the ranking in general. And that's all of the services, not just on three, not just 24 seven arrivals. They all do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't see the kid at the camps, you don't yeah, rank him yeah. adequately, yeah. but that doesn't mean that he's a worse football player because he can't spend money to go travel or play flag football year round or in Trey McNutt's case. It, it's it's in, it is inherently flawed. Think, think about all the kids in Ohio that weren't allowed literally to play at all. So, and then that allows this narrative to be created about not just Ohio kids, but Midwestern recruits in general. As opposed to Southern kids who go year round. Thank you. If the best kids out of the Midwest come from places like Ohio, where you can't do football year round, you can't go to the camps, you can't play in the 707 games, and that, uh, that ends up ranking or uh, ends up affecting Midwestern or Ohio recruits. What is that? What story does that tell about Midwestern or Ohio recruits? Mm -hmm. It tells you that they're inherently lesser. And so now a, a guy like, like Trey McNutt or a guy like Dwayne Galloway, right? Who's the 11th ranked quarterback, so, so, so to speak, right now in the industry. You have no way of knowing if that's accurate because Dwayne Galloway is not able to play seven on seven when some of these other cornerbacks are being ranked ahead of him. So even at that, he could be he, he could be the number one, the number two, number three. We would never know because all of those guys are competing year round mm -hmm. and they're going to have an inherently higher ranking, whether or not their skill dictates it or not. Yeah. And that is what these guys and these services will not acknowledge to you or even tell you while they're doing the rankings, which makes the entire system inherently flawed to me. No, for sure. I think the thing about Trey McNutt and what he's doing to fight back against that is the fact that this is not something that's going to impact him because he's going into uh, 2025 already, you know, being recruited and highly sought it from, you know, obviously great colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that's going to impact everybody after him. Yeah. So, like, for him to fight for this is it's dope. It doesn't completely fix the issue because, again, you're still there's still a financial aspect. Like, if I can't pay to go to Florida to go compete, if I can't pay to go to California to compete, if I can't afford to go to Elite 11, then I'm shot. If I can't afford to go to all of the prelim camps that qualify me for Elite 11, then I'm shot. But then there may be some of those seven on seven here in Ohio now that they might be able to make this rule change. I mean, does that help you if you live in West Virginia or Pennsylvania or somewhere that's not? Well, they would also have to make their rule changes. The point is your ranking, right, should not be determined on how many off-season activities you can afford yeah. or travel to. Mm -hmm. That is something that has nothing to do with football, but dictates your ranking to these services, which dictates how colleges view you as well. Mm -hmm. Some of them. Right. Some programs have evolved beyond that and don't star watch and others haven't. But on, on a on a you know a large scale, you're really looking at the haves and have nots. The haves are the five stars, the have nots are the threes and belows. Sure. Threes and belows, there's a lot of guys in there that couldn't afford to show up at camp month in, month out. Can't do it. Yeah. I play football at high school where I can walk to. Come and evaluate me there on the things that make good football players. But this is, you know, I'm taking over your take here. So, No, uh, Gray has to be watching. Just DM me. And uh, it, was a, it was an article that says, what the fuck is up with Terrence Howard's hair? No. Is that what it says? No, no. This has nothing to do with Terrence Howard's hair. At least the article doesn't. That was crazy. Okay, I'm going to try to block that for a second so I can focus. Terrence Howard explains why he's suing creative artists agency and says he's owed $120 million because of a package deal that they had with Fox, which resulted in him getting paid $325,000 an episode for Empire, while the Big Bang Theory cast $325 paid, an, episode? an episode is insane. While the Big Bang Theory cast was paid $2 million to $3 million per episode. At despite, the end. 
Despite, the end. Ain't no way they got that start now. Despite Empire having more viewers, according to him. Terrence Howard, you look insane. There's, there's no way they were getting paid two to three mil to start. That's probably where they ended up. <laughs> this is Terrence not real. Howard looks insane. That's like this is this is an AI video. I'm not watching a real video of, of, of that is his real hair, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I am. I'm, I really hope. I'm well, you know what? The article is great. I really hope Gray sent me that just so I can see <laughs> the video. Because that's insane. He looks like the, the cowardly lion from The Wizard of Oz. He, he looks up. Okay, so let, 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 let's be clear. Men did used to have blowouts like that. Yes. It's just shocking to see it in 2024. <laughs> Absolutely Yo, shocking. That's crazy. Gray's in here laughing now. I know that's why you sent it to me. Like, if DJ got out of jail, got a record deal, had three number one albums and retired, that's what DJ would look like. DJ looking like that is great. Got out of jail, signed a deal, had three number ones, and now he retired. My boy got a lion mane. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I'm, I'm moving off of that. Uh, my next and last dub was going to Taylor Rooks. First of all, I'm so sick of Emmanuel Cho and his garbage takes. Yeah. Especially as it pertains to race and, and gender in this case. Why do you never just talk about African athletes? Why doesn't he talk about African culture in sports? I don't know. Why doesn't he talk about Africans in sports? Uh, like, there are plenty of African athletes for you to comment on. There are plenty of Nigerian athletes for you to speak on. Yes. There are plenty of opportunities for you to introduce your country's culture. Right. The culture that you claim to know the most about. Because, you know, you set yourself away from black Americans the last time you spoke out, right? Last time you talked about something that had to do with black Americans. Mm-hmm. You set yourself out of it because you said you were disconnected from that trauma or whatever the fuck you said. Right. So why don't you discuss things that have to do with your culture uh, within sports? It seems like a, a, a perfect opportunity, you being a Nigerian native, to speak about Nigerian things in sports. No, he wants to do that. For black people. You want to talk about young black girls, young black American girls. You want to talk about young black men and white supremacy and how they should deal with it and speak to white people about it. Yep. Yep. You want to talk about everything that got to do with black people that's not Nigerian. Facts. So his take was apparently uh, he tried to keep gender and race out of this, uh, but then disparaged um What's my girl's name? Angel, yes, yes. Uh, For basically trying to paint herself as the villain. And so the villain role comes with all of this. She didn't paint herself as a villain. What she did was talk a lot of shit. Yes. You don't have to be a villain for talking shit. Is Dame a villain? No. Oh, he is the Paul... Paul George. To Paul George, he's absolutely a villain. He, he's in his nightmares. Is D'Lo a villain? No. Is oh, Paul George? Is he a villain? No. But you know what I'm saying? Is Jamal Murray? Is Ratface Murray a villain? Absolutely, he's a fucking villain. That's crazy. Yes, he is. Uh, no, she is painted as a villain because she did all these things to the coveted white girl. Yeah, to 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 the great white hope, and yes. that that was her true crime. Yes. Is that she offended the great white hope. And she did that last year, not this year. And the first lady. Yeah. That that is her that's her true. But like all of this stuff about now, the one thing I will say that she can't say is about her being sexualized. Angel Reese, nobody sexualized you. You sexualized yourself. You sexualized yourself. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The TikToks. The videos, twerking videos, the photo shoots. No, no, no. No one like AI means you those pictures. Like you did that. Sure. You made yourself a sex symbol. You're allowed to be a sex symbol and a basketball player. You're allowed to be both. You can be a sexual object and a and a basketball player. And you can exist in both of those spaces as you please. I just didn't like that she made it seem like that had been thrust upon her unduly. The villain role had because talking shit and being competitive doesn't make you a villain. Correct. And everybody 
from CNN today, Portnoy tried to make her out to be a bad guy. Absolutely. So yeah, in that way, I chose out. But that's not even what he was talking about. He didn't even go there, which is where I thought he was going to go at first when he start talking about giving a gender neutral opinion. Yeah. Um, I didn't think that he was going to go to the competitive stuff because that's the one thing that people really don't have a right to say because you never talk about the dudes when they're talking shit. Yeah. They're not villains when they're talking shit. Yeah, whether it's Larry Bird or Michael Jordan or the, the one Jordan. thing that everybody respects Larry Bird for the most is that he talks shit the best. Yeah, and, and that he was at, he was a white guy from Indiana who was able to talk shit with black guys in a professional sport. Absolutely, that's what they appreciated about him, and he took it. When he had to. They didn't make him the white devil because he talked shit to black guys while playing basketball. No. It all just competed. It was all competing. I don't even think that the players, like Caitlin Clark or anybody from uh, from South Carolina, I don't think they try to make Angel Reese out to be a villain. Yeah. It is, it is, it's been a media narrative that makes – because the, also part of it is that most of the people speaking on this do not understand the culture around it. Right. Dave Portnoy doesn't understand that, like, talking shit in basketball is basketball culture. Mm-hmm. That as offended as he was over this to Caitlin Clark, she didn't give a shit about it. As offended as you are for her, she could care less. Well, because it's she, basketball. She dished it out. She has to offer And she got it, it back. Yeah. It's basketball. It's competition. It's literally basketball. But even more than competition, it is part of basketball culture. No, for sure. The same way, like clearing the bench and having 32 people fight in the middle of a baseball field is part of baseball culture. But we're not going to start that conversation today. Or hockey. Talking shit in the middle of a basketball game is basketball culture. Sure. And so there's one level of it where, yeah, we obviously going to make this young black girl an enemy. But then there's another level of it where we're misidentifying the the – extra layer of culture within the sport because we just don't know it. Sure. But Taylor uh, offered a response to bro, which he didn't mention in his response, which is crazy. Uh, But she says, respectfully, colleague, the disappointing thing about this take is you actually can't have an informed opinion on this. If you are choosing to be gender neutral and racially indifferent. What are you talking about? That's impossible. That's what charges the entire situation. It's her gender and her race. Yeah. You have to ask why Angel became the villain. You have to ask why her role as villain was has not allowed her to also be human. You have to wonder why her being asked a question and simply answering has led to this level of discourse. She says a lot more, but shout out to Chillmonger for also pointing this out to me, but I saw it before that. But yeah, man, she 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 gave a lot of points, a lot of great points like, as a black woman. For the people who were, and I, and, and, I, and I will say that this is a very small crowd, but for the people who are attempting to hold Angel responsible for her brashness or, or her bravado, I can see that, right? Because there is a bit of, of, of come up as there is a bit of, of come do, like the bills come do. Mm-hmm. You, you write them wolf tickets, somebody gonna cash them in on your ass. Yeah. Right. And that 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 that's sports. But to the degree that she should be dragged through the mud. Or made into a negative figure because of that. I don't agree with that. And, and, and I, I don't. I don't see how it's necessary to do that either. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, okay, on to my L's. Chance the rapper is getting a divorce. Oh. I am giving an L. I hate my wife. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I no. hate my wife. Yeah. Come on, man. We can't be making fun of Chance. Why can't we? Why? It's a serious thing. I, I know that Chance talked about a lot of positive things, and you know it sounded very nice on a bad album. But he's a celebrity. Sure, he's a rich man. But then the man can who had a wife whose marriage didn't work out. He's no yeah. different than anybody else who had a who has a failed relationship. But he's going to get most of the flack because he was the I love my wife guy. Well, because it, there's irony in that. Like there's irony some way, shape, or form. Either he's the guy who worshipped his wife on all his tracks and she just ended up leaving him, or he's the guy who worshipped his wife on all his tracks and didn't practice that behind the scenes. Either way, it's extremely ironic and slightly humorous. We can't give him some time to deal with the divorce before we go into it, though. I don't think this this happened yesterday. 
this is, is said after a separation. Sure. What's more interesting to me is when did the separation start? Like, did the the twerking at Car- uh, Caribbean uh, really uh, that played a part. spearhead this? Like, that played I, a part. I, I, now that would disappoint me. That would honestly disappoint me. Like, if that was just part of a longer saga of shit that had already been planned out, like they was already on the verge, and you know, seeing him yeah. go viral. I feel like it woman, played a part, but it wasn't the thing. That it would disappoint me if that played a role, or so, they could have been separated by that time. Right. I was gonna say now if that was during the separation period and that just pissed you off and sent you over the edge, okay. Yeah. I guess, I guess. But if this is a legitimate gripe that led to y'all being divorced, it is one of the more immature, it, it's akin to Darius and Kiki Palmer. And That's and true. honestly, it does something to my my idea of who you were before this situation, right? Like somebody who gets divorced over twerking at a party doesn't sound like the the kind of solid relationship that was being portrayed. I would agree with that. And to that end, it probably speaks to what was the breakdown between them all together. Mm-hmm. Right? Like the, the we're not we're not getting the idea that chance gave us about his marriage that that is not what's happening right now yeah between the twerking and between the yeah, divorce yeah you know this is not the idea that we got from all of those i love my wives yeah you know yeah so i um i don't know it'll be interesting first of all i feel like he's going to hate that album as much as we do now the big day uh sure yeah because yeah. it's now a symbol of What's going on with him now? Yeah, we agree. So I, I don't know. I just I don't know. I felt weird about making fun of him immediately. I just me personally. Damn, Tony Robinson think that she cheated. Yeah, I see that with his big ass caps that he wears. I that would be crazy. That'd Gray, be crazy. Gray said, "Why he rocking the Diane wig from Cheers about uh, Terrence Howard?" <laughs> She but with Chance, maybe his eyes got big. You know, like Acid Rap Chance was one thing. Color and Book Chance was another. When we got to the big day, Chance was a star star. Like, yeah. we were still talking about him being an independent artist. But, like, he was he was up there. He was the most non-independent independent artist there is. For sure. So, like, maybe his appetite changed and you know just like a lot of people who go into celebrityism or or to fame with a normal partner and quickly like jordan belfort people from wall street he had a normal wife start getting to that paper start smelling himself a little differently sure you know and wasn't very nice about how he ended that relationship either like he went into it very family oriented and, and had a wife and was married and seemed very content with the normalness of his life. Mm-hmm. And then he started making that cash, and all of a sudden, all his expectations and wants and needs changed. And everything that was good to him before just didn't measure up. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened with Chance. Could be. Could absolutely be. I mean, we'll never officially know, I'm sure, but. Oh, we don't know. Because the music, she gonna talk about it. Oh, she gonna talk. About he it. gonna talk about it. She gonna talk about it. Oh, we gonna know. Yeah. We gonna know. All right, on to my next L. Walter, why are you not being a father to your child, Walter? You want me to get a bushing? Walter, you want me to get a bushin? Why you keep busting at me? You want no baby? Be a father to your child, Walter. That don't make no sense. Why you busting at me? You want no baby? Insane, bro. You are not an alpha male if you're not taking care of your kids. If nobody knows what we're talking about, Fit got a well, I don't know if she's a sex worker, but uh, he met her on a sugar baby site sure. and he got pregnant. Yep, so congratulations. Third member to the Fresh and Fit podcast coming in nine months. You are hiding a child. I feel like Pusha T right now. Literally. Let let that boy come home. Yes. That beat that motherfucker. Beat motherfucker playing Border Patrol. Yeah. What are you doing, fam? Be a father to your child. Nasty work. Even nastier work is that... Okay, so 
let, let, let's let's be real about the situation. I think the young lady who we're, we're speaking of, I don't know her name, but she's not the her name is Her name is uh, Fit. That's not her name. Her name is something Fit. That, that's not her name. Fit. But the young lady is not the sharpest tool in the box. She was already talking about, you know, being married and having a, a family, which he was acquiescing to. All this courtesy of Fresh and Fit, who actually interviewed her, by the way. I'm Fresh and Fit. I've been preached. Mm. Who interviewed her? By oh, the I didn't know they, they yeah. So that, that's where I'm getting all this information. Uh -huh. They were uh, they were talking about this for a while about having a family to the point where she had a pregnancy scare, mm -hmm. took a test, told him about the test, mm -hmm. right? And you know how this motherfucker responded? Oh no, that's cool. That's cool. I really like you. Really like you. Uh, you know, it would have been fine. I just wanted to know. See, I didn't what, pick what, up anything until... What part of the game is that? Not only that, he having conversations about, yeah, let's not just rent in another apartment. Let's go buy a house. It makes more sense. Oh, wow. Family. Family. She told you that if she... Oh, oh, oh. The creme de la creme. After the, the pregnancy scare, uh -huh. she tells him, she asks him, yo, like, why do you keep nothing in me? <laughs> like, you're not going to be this lucky next time. I.e., I'm going to keep the child if this happens again. She already told you how she was going to react. You have already told her that you would have been fine if she got pregnant. You have told this woman that you want to move into a house with her. She's she's. I, I did hear that she met his parents or something. Met shit. his mom met his and all this other shit. But I mean, that could happen. I mean, if you're just a, a, a but they've only been dating for like a couple months. If you're a substandard person and you don't have any values, you'll let anybody meet. That's true. That's true. That's true. Um, but. All of that stuff happened, and then the creme de la creme, she literally told you that if she has another pregnancy scare, that she's going to keep the baby. That she's going to keep the child. And you said, okay. Okay? This is not a baby entrapment. He didn't get ran up for, for child support. This man literally got all the answers to the test and got an F. Fast forward. He got the answer key to the test and got an F. You can take a pill for that, right? You can, you can take a no, pill. no, no. It's cool. It's cool. You just take a pill. And, and <laughs> it's all right. Clear all that up. She tells this man she don't want to take a a, 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 a a plan B pill. And he says, well, then I guess we got to go to a doctor. Bitch, are you stupid? Are <laughs> yes. you dumb? Yo, yes. Clearly you're dumb. Absolutely. But now I'm just trying to ascertain the level of stupid you are. Okay, so you clearly want her to get rid of it. And she's telling you she already told you prior that she's not getting rid of it. For but sure. now she's telling you real time in, her, in your face that she don't want to get rid of it. And so your response is not okay, baby. We'll talk about it later. Da 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 da. No. So no pill. Then I guess we're gonna vacuum it out of you. What part of the game is this? What part of the game is this? You stupid fucktoids. 